How many people here have been to Los Angeles? Yeah, so we're a little bit. Um, I take no responsibility for the title of this, How to Build an Art Powerhouse. I don't even, I would never even think that way. In fact, um, I would argue that the reason I moved to Los Angeles and to LACMA was because it was a little bit off Broadway and it was a little bit less in the spotlight and there might be a chance to experiment. Now, if you want an art powerhouse, the Metropolitan Museum, uh, which I'm showing here, uh, this is the Metropolitan Museum at the first part of the 20th century, about 1910. And I think when I'm talking about museums, um, you know, art is tens of thousands of years old. Museums, just a few hundred. Um, it's just a frame. They're malleable. They should keep changing. And so um, I think about that all the time, that we have to critique our frame all the time for art, that museums aren't art. But the Great Metropolitan Museum, here it is already in 1910. It's already more than, it's 50 years old. Um, about the same time, this is LACMA, which is just the La Brea tar pits and an oil field. <laughs> you get to 1922, and this is what we look like. <laughs> Just airfields and nothing. But you know, we always talk about now China, Shenzhen, all these cities moving fast. How about this for fast? This is Los Angeles in 1922. Uh, this is Los Angeles in 1930. Eight years later, same scene. LACMA is still not on the scene. But this is why so many architects and artists moved to LA. There was a lot of work to do, um, a lot to build. But it wasn't until 1965 that, you know, this there was a respectable art museum that was separate and wanted to be like a great museum like the Met. Um, we just celebrated our 50th birthday. The museum is younger than I am. Uh, but even at that, to be born as an encyclopedic, a big, uh, ambitious museum in the 60s and the tension of the 60s and all, everything changing, um, right as the museum was being born, this is Ed Ruscha's picture of the museum on fire controversial, in tension with, I think, the artist thinking about the conservative institution and um, a critique. I think the idea of critique is fantastic, and we always have to keep that front and center. Um, so this is Ed Ruscha. In 1972, the museum was tagged by Harry Gamboa and, and Patsy Valdez, uh, Chicano artists who were protesting the fact that there was no Chicano Latino art in the museum. So they just tagged the museum another form of critique. But that idea of critique is really important and that idea of continuing to change. So here we've now annexed a city block, doubled our size, doubled our audience. But the idea was to double the, um, to change the diversity of the audience. So now only less than half of our audience is um, white. It's much more diverse through that expansion. But I think of this process of building as something that should be, um, should be made of critique. We aren't diverse enough. There are issues of elitism, leftover colonialism. Uh, we aren't using technology. We're not moving fast enough. So this idea of change, we need, to, we need to change. And I think there's a sense of critique. And when I went to art school, also a sense of critique that artists can have about even a sense of humor in that. And so for me, one of the ways to evolve the critique is with artists creative artists. So inviting um, Chris Burden to make the front of the museum, our version of the Met, the fake temple of LA streetlights. Um, um, to invite John Baldessari, who's an LA artist, uh, the first gesture was to ask him to, uh, to do the scenography for an exhibition in which he nicely turned the world upside down. Blue sky and carpet on the floor, LA freeways on the ceiling. Also asked him to develop the logo and the, the image for LACMA so that it was an artist who was in front of the museum, an artist who was developing the frame, not just their work inside. And that playful idea I think that artists have, you face a blank campus, what do you do? Turn it upside down. Um, inside out, backwards. Just reverse a lot of ideas as a way to be playful. You know, the world, there is no north, there's no up. We see this as school kids, that we know that there's, um, you know, it's all arbitrary. So that idea of upside down, inside out, uh, Robert Irwin's gardens at LACMA are artwork. So put most of the art outside so that you're in the museum before you're in the museum uh, by his collection of palm trees, which is also a sort of uh, statement about collections. Or, even backwards, Barbara Kruger, um, instead of a wall text at the beginning of the museum, let the artist write the text. And maybe a big encyclopedic museum shouldn't start in the past because last I checked, I didn't wake up in the past, 
I woke up this morning, modern day Los Angeles or Berlin. Um, so maybe a new art should be first, the entrance to the museum. So that reversal, again, is a creative way to continually critique and ask questions. Um, and I think, uh, you know, even that idea of media. So when asked why, if I, I was always big on, on this media age technology, and my trustees asked if, if, you're, um, if you're so into media, why are you moving giant boulders and putting up street lamps? And I did say at that time, because you have to take your Facebook picture, or no, your MySpace picture from somewhere, that social media would emerge and there needs to be a sense of place. Ancient times required a sense of place. Social media requires a sense of place and identity. Uh, and that people could express that, even politically, civically. Um, uh, and that these monumental artworks were playful. I think that idea of playfulness is really key, not just in the art, but in the institution. And I don't think, Glenn just said, that it's not a contradiction between playful and serious. They can be both. Um, there's a solemnity and a quiet that can exist in an artwork as well as the playfulness of, for example, how people then put themselves, this being my favorite Instagram post of Michael Heiser's levitated mass, um, and things like that, it's true. We became apparently the fourth most Instagrammed museum in the world, uh, partly because of these artworks, which, and just to say, it's not about our Instagram. Who cares what we say? It matters what other people say to other people. Like, that's where the trust is built, not in our advertising, but in the way people communicate across to each other. And also the idea that we are a social space. We're a town square. Uh, make the living room for Los Angeles is what we talk about sometimes to, um, and again the artist, the idea of artists and not just presenting artists inside as their object but letting them shape the frame, this is Jorge Pardo in our ancient American galleries, um, or think about that idea that time and space are malleable. You know, that European idea of the grid and time goes in one direction and space goes in the other. I feel artists are, good artists are always working across time and space. So in this exhibition of Picasso and Rivera and looking at their ancient sources, we had Greco-Roman, Aztec, Mayan, Picasso and Rivera all in one room and somehow it worked. Um, or taking on film. Uh, we did a big show with Guillermo del Toro and what was amazing to me was not just his artwork, but he collects artwork the not artwork we would collect. And then there were all these other audiences for those artworks that he displayed, and I realized how many alternative art worlds there are, not just one. Um, or our recent exhibition of uh, Mexico, California design, looking at modernism in Mexico, or men's fashion. Fashion has become a big part of our, historical fashion has become a big part of our program. Or now galleries where it's just commonplace all the time to mix old and new, just as regular practice. It's not that we're inventing these ideas. I think part of the experimentation was to do them on the grand scale of the encyclopedic museum. Um, technology, we have revived our art and technology program this is Ansel Adams on the left and ScanLab, who's now scanning in three dimensions the same Yosemite Valley that Ansel Adams was as part of our art and technology lab, pairing artists with technologists and scientists. Um, we get used to now the fact that media is space. This is Diana Thader's installation, that immersive installations are like the old days when there was immersive architecture and sculpture. So the media age is a lot like the old age, or we talked today about immersion and experience. This is really key. Um, this is James Terrell that um, people loved, all kinds of people. This is the art of the future, it's the art of the present. Uh, it was very funny to me, we were talking about showing rock uh, music in museums, but then there's the influence the other way. Famously, um, I woke up one morning and a lot of people were calling me about Drake's hotline bling video because Drake had made his own James Terrell after visiting LACMA a couple of times um, and everybody wanted to know if James Terrell got paid. Uh, to quote Jay, uh, Drake and forgive the language, Drake says, I fuck with Terrell, he was a big influence on the visuals for my last tour. And I talked to James, is he going to sue him, is he going to praise him and he, uh, to quote James Terrell, he said, he made a beautiful quote, while I am truly flattered to learn that Drake F's with me. I nevertheless wish to make clear that neither I nor any of my woes was involved in any way in the making of the Hotline Bling video. 
separating himself and then providing the admiration at the same time in a playful way. Uh, we talked about VR, uh, Alejandro Iñárritu has a huge installation now at our museum that is entirely immersive. You take off your shoes for seven minutes, you're walking on sand, and you're on the border between the U.S. and Mexico in a confrontation between immigrants and U.S. officials, and some people do hide behind virtual bushes. Some people cry, some people um, come out with a completely different perspective, but virtual reality is the present in art museums. But the latest innovation is the real. And uh, we've been working for years trying, uh, working to renovate the Watts Towers in LA and thinking about other communities. And this is probably the biggest theme of the present for me is the decentering of the museum. This is uh, Cyril Fergus Ferguson, Cecil Ferguson, who started at LACMA as a janitor and 20 years later ended as a curator and uh, helped start the Watts Art Center. Um, artists like Noah Purifoy, who we showed, helped, was the other key figure in the Watts Art Center, making his own museum. Today, this is a work by Mark Bradford at LACMA. Um, Mark Bradford is working in LA to create his own, not only museum, but working with foster kids, helping neighborhoods, my view is always follow the artists. Um, and our recent work has been about looking at communities and decentering the museum into all the zip codes that don't visit physically. So partnerships hanging an Egypt banner in an Egypt show at East Los Angeles College on the border of the Latino, Latina, and Chinese communities, turning, uh, creating a branch for LACMA at Charles White Elementary School and playing with the banner idea. If you have the banners at the mat, you have the banners at the elementary school, uh, permanent. And looking at communities, this is an 80,000 square foot empty building for 30 years in South Los Angeles that hopefully will become a LACMA or a 102 acre park in further South Los Angeles and that's some of the toughest uh, areas in Los Angeles which we're planning to turn into large museum space. Um, we're really decentering the museum thinking about the Pacific. I talk about the program a little bit as the view from the Pacific. We're as far away from Tokyo as we are from Paris, so we're in between. And this view from the Pacific is different. It's not that we don't include Europe, it's just further away or just as far away. So we're talking with the Yu's Museum in Shanghai uh, for a partnership in collections and programs. And if you come today to LACMA, you can see the original metropolis of the Americas, Teotihuacan, Khan, which by the way, new research says was founded by three women. Um, or uh, a show of Iranian contemporary and old art and traditional art that talks about the past and the present in Iranian art, um, in media, in traditional objects. And just ending with um, a plan to tear down those 60s buildings and replace them with one new structure. They're badly in need of repair. One new structure, a $650 million project, which adds to the city block that we developed, and this design by Peter Zumtor, and he said, why the design? It's organic, it has no front or no back, it crosses Wilshire Boulevard, it has multiple entrances. That way, not only, it's more important not that it ha doesn't have a facade, but also that it's, there's no back, no cultures in the back. It's democratic, it's flat, it's in the city, it's lifted above the park, it's transparent to the outside all the way around 360 degrees glass. And then finally to say, I don't think there's a conflict between the cacophony of the energy and the selfies at urban light outside and the idea that there can be a moment of real so quiet solitude inside with a single object. I think those aren't contradictory. We can have it all in a sort of pluralistic approach. Um, so that's just a little sketch, Robin. I don't know if there are, um, I know you have thoughts and questions, just for food for thought. We're done. <laughs> that was pretty amazing and definitely a lot of food for thought. Um, and you definitely uh, touched on a lot of the things that I, some of which I just would like to re revisit in the few minutes we have left. And one of them that strikes me is that you are, you know, you are doing this major capital effort to rebuild your building um, at a time when you are also talking about expanding into the rest of the city. You mentioned the project last just now. You don't need to be doing both. And it clearly, it's enough of a uphill climb to raise $650 million in LA. 
uh, for an art project. Why do this kind of South Central LA effort and, and what makes you actually think it could bear fruit? Well, I think maybe just the first question to why do it now. I mean, if you have a problem, one way to solve it is to just make it bigger. Everyone knows that. Uh, <laughs> and there's a sense of urgency about the fact that maybe we aren't constructed. That idea of a palace and you put things in it and it's one location, it's just maybe not the only idea. So by decentering it into these horizontal metropolises that spread out, I think is the great experiment to decenter the museum. And I, we can't wait. I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting. In an institution, if you want to see this change, it takes decades. And it, it really, it, it's like you have to get a move on. We need this now. We need to be thinking about museums in terms of communities and who our audience is in different ways. And I think there's just no time like the present. There's no other good excuse for it. You have been in LA for a decade? 12 years. 12 years. And when, you had, when you arrived, you had talked about kind of like you need 25 years? I mean, what was your scope? Well, I do say that, that um, you know, companies might think in quarters and museums have to think in quarter centuries. Because it takes a quarter century to do anything of significance in a large-scale institution in a metropolis. So I was very conscious of that. You just have to keep at things. Certain things will fail. Right. That's okay. Experimentation can lead to failure. That's the idea of maybe being off-Broadway a little bit in Los Angeles and you know, having that chance to experiment. And what about feeling pulled in these different directions where you do need to try to cultivate this Hollywood constituency, which has been a little slow to get with the program in terms of supporting the arts? You've done that pretty successfully, but that does sort of require one side of who Mike, Michael Govan is. And on the other hand, you want to be thinking in a scrappier way about you know, reaching inner, the inner city. Do, do you feel like those I, are two? I don't think there's a conflict at all. No. I think that there's a desire in that community to be a community, and when you introduce people to other communities, uh, I, I don't think it's a conflict. I mean, we did a show recently of the uh, great uh, French um, filmmaker Agnes Varda, and was looking back at her films done in Los Angeles in the 70s, they're a cinematic artist looking at neighborhoods like that in Los Angeles at that time, and you realize the holism. And I don't sense that Hollywood wants to be by itself. Um, and I think that it's a time of pluralism, which invites filmmaking, art, um, all together. It's all the same. When I was writing about a new, a new pro a profile of the new director